Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. I'm Natasha, and this is Witchcraft. Today we are gonna make um, beret, beret. My French is yuck, but you've seen the picture on the thumbnail, so we're gonna make that style of hat. Um, I've already went ahead and done most of it because it's just um a section being repeated eight times and then also together so i'm gonna show you how to do a single section i'm gonna show you how to connect the section to another and then we're gonna pull everything together it's not difficult but it takes a little bit of um let's say concentration just not to lose yourself on on the actual pattern so i have my wee um row count here and we are working on a flat panel so let's start you're gonna need the row count uh it will be a total of 55 rows but there are constant increases and i did it this way just because i find that increasing on a flat panel it's easier than decreasing and we are going to end the project, the section, with waste yarn. So you're going to need waste yarn for this as well. I am using, in this case, an Adam weight yarn by Signet Deluxe in grey. I made another one um, with a DK so we can then compare uh, the, the differences. But let's get started. So what you want, first of all, what you need is ideally to use either your Adi 46 because the row count will count back and forth or this kind of row count because if you only go with the row count that counts with the 48 then it is not good because it only counts in one direction. Plus this can be done at least the first part of the the hat can be done on any machine but we will need to do the brim on the uh bigger machine so if you have an addy better if you don't have an addy and you have a central 48 it's useful to have this kind of uh, row count otherwise get a manual one jot put it on a piece of paper um just to keep track of your counts and let's get started so we're gonna start by casting on two needles and the way you do this is you put it in front of one needle i am choosing needles that are closer to my row count so i know that it will be counting start right from the start so first needle that i chose to start from i put the the yarn on top on front and under the hook the second needle will go the yarn will go on the back of that feed it through the yarn feeder you can already put it in in the tensioner and crank until the third needle brings the yarn down and under this v bump like this so this is my first needle with the yarn in front. This is my second needle with the yarn at the back. The third needle only helps me to bring the yarn underneath this bump and create the tension that I need. As we know, we do not count the cast on row, let's call it a row, as a first row of the project. So at this point, you're gonna reset your counter and we're gonna knit two rows on two needles so now we're gonna go backwards this is the second needle picking up the yarn and pulling it down my first needle picking the yarn and pulling it down the, this needle here is gonna bring down the yarn just enough for it to go underneath this bump. Now I'm going. This is my first row done. Now I'm going to go backwards. 
So my first needle picks the yarn. My second needle picks the yarn. This is my second row. At this point, I'm gonna increase one in this direction. So I'm gonna have the third needle picking the yarn and pulling it down. And I'm gonna have the fourth needle as a help to bring down the yarn. I'm gonna go now, oh, I'm gonna go now backwards. So my third needle is knitting. My second needle is knitting. My first needle is knitting. And I need to decrease, it. I need to increase on this side. So I'm gonna knit an extra one. And the white needle is the one helping me to pull down the yarn. So now that I'm on my third row, I need to knit five rows. So once I get to five, I'll increase. So I'm gonna go backwards. Go slowly. No need to rush. So this is my fourth row. I'm gonna go back. This is my fifth row, and I'm gonna increase one. I'm gonna go back and increase on my sixth row. Now I need to get to nine on my row counter before the next increase. Now that I'm nine, I'm gonna increase one here, go back and increase one on the other side. So, just to try and make you understand what I'm doing here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little. Okay, so here I'm starting with two needles and I'm doing two rows. Let's do this, to not confound yourself. And I'm doing two rows. Then I'm gonna, at the end of the second row, I need to increase one. And when I go backwards, I increase another. So I need to, after my second row, I need to knit four needles until I reach five rows. So this is this is the sum of rows. I, I, okay. I'm ho I'm hoping I'm making sense of this. Um. So these are the numbers. These are the total of needles that I need to stitch every time. These are the numbers of rows by for each set of needles that I need to knit. And this is the total of the row count. Mm -hmm. So the way I do it is I start with two needles and I, and I knit two rows. Once I get to the end of the second row, I increase one needle on one side, go back, so that is going to be my third row going back and I increase another. So at my third row, I have four needles knitting. I need to then row, um, knit another two rows in order to reach a total of five on my counter. Once I reached five on my counter, I'm going to go and increase one needle on one side, going back on my sixth row and increase a needle on that side and keep knitting until I reach number nine on my row counter. Once I reach number nine, I increase one needle. Then I go back on number 
10 of the row and increase another needle. And I keep going back and forth until I reach 14 and so on and so forth. So the way I keep myself straight is I know I need to start with two needles and I need two rows and then I go by row counting. So I'm just going to go by this column here and I know that when my row counter reaches five, I need to increase on one end and then on the other. When I reach nine, I need to increase on one end and then the other. When I reach 14, I increase on one end and another. This until I reach 55 for a total of 20 needles knitting. So I hope it's making sense. I'll try to make sense with this at the end of the video as well. But let's keep going. So I am at a number, I've knitted 10 rows. I'm going to go back now to do the 11th. And I will keep knitting my rows until I reach 14 on my row counter. So now that I'm at 14 I'm gonna increase one on this on the same side I'm in going back increase another one on the other side now I just keep cranking normally until I reach 20 So this is my 20th row. I'm going to add one, one needle. Going back, I'm going to add another one until I reach now 27. This is my 27th row coming to an end. Now I'm going to add an extra needle and then go back and add an extra needle here. Now I'm going to knit until I reach 35 of my row counter. This is my 35th row, so I'm going to add one needle. Going back, I'm going to add another one here. And I'm going to knit until I reach 44 on my row counter. This is 44, so I'm going to add an extra needle. I'm going back, I'm going to do the same. Add an extra needle. And now I'm going to knit until I reach 50.
This is 50. I'm going to add an extra needle. And add an extra needle. Until I knit 55. Okay, I'm actually just checking. I'm going to do an extra row, so 56. And the reason being is, when you do this, you're always having a tail on one side. And as soon as we need to connect all the pieces together, I need the tail to always be on the same side so I can use them to, to stitch. I mean, it's not a big deal. Eh? I mean, I'm just a little bit OCD on this. Um, so 55 or 56, is the, it's the same, just be constant, that all the pieces that you do are either 55 or 56. I must have just messed up the very first one and just kept going with that, as I do. Now that you reach the end, you're going to cut a decent tail. Because we're going to use that to sew the piece together. And now we need to go back and use waste yarn to cast off. Remember using that contrasting color. And you put the waste yarn between the last needle that has the knitting on it and the, the empty one beside it. Make sure you have a decent amount of rows for waste yarn because there is a lot of handling to do. And the last thing you want is everything to unravel on you. And with the waste yarn, it doesn't matter where you're ending, which side. So whenever you feel that you're comfortable with the numbers of rows, then you cut your yarn and you just crank once without yarn. And then go back so it just folds off of the machine. Okay, now before taking the machine away, we might as well, <coughs> sorry, doing the brim. Uh, for the brim, we can do it two ways. So, you can choose whichever way you feel comfortable with. You can cast on without waste yarn, crank 18 to 20 rows, depending on how thick you want your brim. You can double it up on the machine and close it on the machine. 
and that is probably what I'm gonna do. Or you can use waist yarn at the start, crank 18, 20 rows, and cast off with waist yarn, and then you can put it all together later on. Mm, but I think I'm gonna. Actually, no, I'm gonna use waist yarn. Start and finish. Ooh, what, am, what am I doing? What am I doing? Silly, silly me. Casting on with waist yarn. If you don't know how to cast on with waist yarn or cast on in general, I have a video on my channel that it will explain in detail the cast on with and without waist yarn. So check that one out if you are unsure of how to do this. Let's grab our working yarn, reset your counter, and I'm going to do 18 rows, 1 8. Again, the, the row count for this, the brim. That's your preference choice. So you know you're going to double it up anyway. So it's a matter of how thin or thick, wide you want your brim to be. You go. Right, I'm going to close this once I double it up. I'm going to close this with a single crochet and I'm going to use the yarn coming 
out of the bowl so i'm not gonna worry too much about the tails i'm gonna still leave enough tail not to have my project on gravel or anything like that but i'm not gonna use a long tail from the project itself so i'm at 18 i cut my yarn i'm gonna add my waste yarn again Okay, now we have all our pieces. I'll stretch your project a little bit, just be careful of your waist yarn. Okay. What you want to do is start aligning the sides together like this with the knit side outwards, and we're gonna close it doing a single crochet. Okay, so what I did is I just started putting stitch markers. All around just to keep it in shape because my project kept curling on me so this will help me just to keep it everything in place now grab your working yarn I'm I'm, I'm working directly from the um, we call it from the the skin of yarn so we need to close it up doing single crochet the reason why I'm doing single crochet is because I need to Try and maintain as much as a stretch as possible. Again, disclaimer, I do not crochet. I mean, I'm not a crochet. I learn a couple of things by myself on YouTube. So this might not be the proper way of doing things, but this is the way I do it and it works for me so I start by just looping and threading through the yarn from the two stitches so I can have a loop many people will start with a slip stitch not much of a difference I just prefer doing it this way and then I chain one now I need to grab the other two stitches so one from the bottom one from the top pull through yarn over and pull through and keep going so you grab the two stitches yarn over pull through the two stitches yarn over again and pull through the two loops this all the way around Take your time. A 
and make sure that you're working on the external row of stitches of your main color project. So this one here and this one here. And don't be too tight in doing your single crochet. Again, we want to maintain some sort of flexibility. Okay, now we can take that aside for now. Just fetching for a thinner needle just because I, I like it best in my hands. So what we have now, we bring back the project, the, the section of the project that we did before. So you should have something like that, a triangle. You want to pull on, on the wee tail at the very top, and you can actually cut the excess off. Just be careful not to be too close to the project. Stretch it a little bit. I know it's gonna curl on you. You just need to work with it the best you can. Another thing you need to be careful of is, as we are using this, to sew together the pieces do not pull too much because if you pull too much you're gonna tighten up your stitches here and you're gonna need those you're gonna need those to finish off the project so this is what i did so far this is what it should be looking like as you go along Let's see if i can zoom out okay so we have one two three four five six seven and eight so it's eight sections that you need to sew together this will be my last one so we're gonna knit the whole project closed but while you're at it, while you're building it up, obviously it's just one side at a time. <coughs> you might find that the top gets funny. It, it, it might feel that either you're too short or you're too long with it. Trust the process because the top part, it's, uh, it's forgiving. I mean, we, we can adjust the top part with no much of an issue so let's start we are going to do at the best as we can a sort of a mattress stitch i'm saying the best we can and a sort of is because obviously we are going how can i explain this mattress stitch you will usually follow a column but you don't have a straight column because if you start here then at some point you have a decrease so you need to jump the column and then go a little bit further and then jump in again and go a little bit further to try and, and, and seam the whole side so try to keep yourself on the edge and we are still gonna um pick the two bars together so the way i start this i'm gonna go on my very first very last loop of my working yarn on the side of the other section that does not have the tail that's why i wanted always to finish the tail at the same side I'm gonna go here make sure just to 
put myself inside the loop and not catching the waste yarn. The waste yarn at the beginning will annoy you. But take your time. Be patient with it. Patient with it. I mean, you can even maybe clip it aside like this. The best you can with a stitch marker if it really, really bothers you. Okay. I didn't do a good job here. But you get the, the, the point. So just roll it. Shove it to the side. Put a stitch marker. The best you can. If that really annoys you that you can, you're having problems working with it. Okay. Now we need to go back on this side, and this is the start. It's where you're going to start picking up the two bars. And this is where I'm telling you the waist turn is going to bother you. But once you knit the first couple of stitches, then you're good to go. And keep yourself on the edge, but on the edge where you can clearly see the stitches. Because if I unravel this completely, I hope you can see it. Look at this that wee small edge here, just so here are the stitches, and then this there is this wee small edge on the side of those stitches. So in ignore that, just go to the first clear visible column of stitches that you can find as close to the edge but obviously it needs to be a clear column and you start from there pull ever so slightly and this is again when you pull pull but be careful because the more you pull the more you're going to tighten the stitches inside and you need those for later Again, you're going to go on the other side, pick up two bars, on the other side, pick up two bars, now here is where you need to make a jump, so here you're, you're seeing the stitches are no longer that defined, so you're going to go the next column in. Those are two bars I'm going to pick up. Again, here, the same. I'm coming out from here. I don't have anywhere else to go, so I'm going to go inside one column and pick those two stitches. <coughs> Here, again, I have nothing else to pick, so I'm going to go in two columns again and pick up two stitches. So look at it like you, you're following an alley and you're go into a dead end then you need to get the next one in but at the same time guys i mean for those of you that have seen my videos in the past and probably you're starting to have an idea on how i work my work is not The, the way I like to teach, and big air quotes because obviously I, I'm not a teacher as such, but the way I like to show people is that there is no right or wrong in the way of doing things. I'm showing you the way it works for me, but you don't have to follow it exactly to the letter. In a sense, use this as an inspiration, use this as a, an example, test it. But if it doesn't work for you, try something else. 
because you might find that another kind of stitch maybe if you just slip stitch in, in the inside maybe it works better for you at least this is giving you the idea of what's going on and what we are trying to achieve So until you have uh, stitches to pick, follow the, the column. Once you get to a point where you don't have any more stitches to pick, then jump the column and go the one after. You might find yourself that on one piece of the project, you're still on the same column where on the other side you have, might have to jump a couple, very uh, in repetition. That's fine. Don't be concerned about that, just trust the process. And every now and again, pull it shut. Now, the reason why I'm telling you in this case to pull it shut every now and again, every couple of stitches, is because not doing it on a straight row. If you wait to pull it shut once you get to the end, it will be way harder. Because the the yarn will not slide as it should. And you might run the risk of actually breaking the yarn. So every couple of stitches, just give it a tug. To close it shut all right And you might often than not come across this kind of situation here where you have a few stitches and then you have like a big hole. Okay. Now, me personally, if I have a couple of stitches to pick, I don't mind. Even if I was to come out of that big hole it's fine what i would not do is having one stitch here and going all across at that point i would actually go the the the, the column beside it but once again test it try it don't don't be afraid to experiment guys it's fun following other people's project absolutely 
and it's fun then obviously learning from it and making it your own but at the same time don't be afraid to use that as a as a starting point to just experiment because you might have a brilliant idea by watching a video of somebody else's and make something great out of it just try it And sometimes it looks like you're crossing while you're jumping the extra column. Again, it's fine. It's better that way than not because otherwise you might end up creating a hole. Now, you see here, for example, I have this point. It's almost like it's, it's overhanging, right? I'm going to leave it like that for now. And I'm going to just add a couple of more stitches to secure it in place. Pull the thread underneath. Why are we not? Hold that access. And just use the seams here just to hide your tail. We are going to fix this once we get these two sides together and again no right or wrong once i get to the very end and connect them together most likely this going is going to go like this underneath 
Okay. So I'm going to catch up with you guys once I get to the very end. The process is exactly as we did before. So start from your re loop. And start dropping the stitches. So I'll see you once I get to the top. Okay, so I am at the end. And I just poke the wee corner inside. And I'm just going to pick up the stitches the best I can. From one side to the next. I'm actually pinching the, the wee corner with my fingers. So I can keep them. I'll keep it in place there. And I have a hold on the hat. Okay, just put your yarn inside. This is the wee corner here. And I'm telling you guys, each hat that you're going to make, it might not um this might not happen it depends on the yarn it depends on the row count so for example the one that i made out of dk i did not have this much of a overhang i also did one with like 50 46 rows rather than 56 and it didn't have that much of a overhang, but it was just too small and too tight. So, you might find yourself that if you make a bunch, not everyone will come out uh, properly the same. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so... This is your hat done. We are going to make something then to just embellish the top of it. But what we need to do now is secure the base because we need to then take away the, the waist yarn. So the way we're going to do that is again doing single crochet all along because we need to maintain um, a stretch to it. Let's grab our working yarn. Hopefully, this will be enough. And start any way you want.
I'll grab a stitch. I'm going to make a chain one. What you need to do is just be careful that you are grabbing every stitch. And unlike the brim, you're only grabbing one stitch at a time. Don't be too tight on it. Okay, so we have arrived at the back of the start, so I'm going to just Close everything up with a slip stitch. And now we can remove all the waste yarn. These are all cast off, so easy enough to just unravel. So I'll catch you back once all the waste yarn is off. And we can get to the final stage of the project. Okay, so I removed all the waste yarn. Obviously, when you're doing that, do it slowly because you might, like me, might have missed one or two stitches here and there. Um, so, for example, I missed this one stitch. And it was something similar to this, so it, it was clearly right on the seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed this loop at the front. Put a stitch marker so I know that this is a, a loose stitch. Let's grab our brim and stretching it more, as much as possible, obviously without breaking anything, but this needs to be comfortable around the head. So now we need to attach this to this. And the way we're going to do it is I'm going to use the seams as connection points. So let's start with this loose stitch here and just grab. Just so I know where I am with it. We will be sewing this together, but in a way that we are going to pick up the stitches so we are not actually sewing the um, how you call it the, the crochet side of things this will be then on the inside like this but just to try and even it out as uh, as much as possible so i'm gonna go on the opposite side And do this. Now I know that the two ends will be my two ends here.
Okay, so now that we have this in place, we can put this here. It's just to try and, and have an even uh an even amount of stitches so together per section, if that makes sense. I mean it's not gonna be precise. Okay. Once more, grab your working yarn, grab your needle, and let's start. So you're going to grab. Two stitches, so two two V's from the top. Bear in mind, I did not count the stitches. So me saying that you grab two stitches at the top and one at the bottom doesn't mean that I did the, the math. I'm just eyeballing it and work it as I go. So I grab two from the front, one from the bottom. With the right side out. Two from the top. And one from the bottom. I'm trying to be as close as possible to the edge. This is also why I would use the stitch markers like this. Because as I, I'm I boiling it, boiling it, um, I see if I need to grab more stitches or, or less kind of thing. I'm not good with precise stuff. My brain does not work like that. So if you're a kind of person that likes to have exact measurements, um, I'm sorry, uh, but that's not me. So at some point, start pulling it together.
And we are done. Let's cut the tails. Yeah, we are done. Almost. I mean, doing it from scratch is not... It's not really a quick, quick project. I mean, you, you, you will whip up the, the section fairly quick. That is all this um, putting it together, sewing it together, kind of. But I think the result is worth it. If anything, it's fun to do something different. Okay, so this is it. This is the half finished. I brought the other, um, the other two that I made. So we can just check the difference. The process is exactly the same. Just the row count will uh, differ, but we are always talking about eight sections. So this has a very small brim. This is made with iron weight. These are made with DK. The section of this one, we had a maximum of 55 rows. This was the section was 46. And this one was 50. On this one here, I tried making the brim in a different way. And the, the brim, I made a tube on the 22 needle machine. And I think the row count was oh. So the way I did the row count, I can't remember how many rows this was, but I measured my head with a tape measure. Just just measured my circumference of my head. So I could do it now. We are talking about twenty three inches and I multiplied that by five rows because five rows is give or take one inch so 23.5 so it was 110 110 115 rows but that's more or less how I guesstimate how many rows I needed it Considerations. I love the hat. I love how I mean how different it is. Would I make more out of the Aran? Maybe not. I probably Aran is just too thick. I mean, it doesn't work as well as the DK. But maybe doing it smaller. With a bigger brim kind of thing, maybe changing the the proportion with the iron weight, maybe. But I do prefer this one here with the DK. Um, it came out obviously the row count was uh, different and the the thickness is different, so it came out smaller, cooler. This was okay, but the brim was just too loose. So the way I would do it again, if I was to do it this way, would probably measure my head, multiply it by five, and maybe take away 10 rows out of it. But again, play with it. See how it works for you. Do one for yourself and, and see how you feel about it. and. Take it from there, take it from, uh, how you said, just play with it and make your own, make make the one that you like the most. I like the Aran feel to it, I like 
but I just feel that maybe it's not the right kind of yarn for this kind of project. But, um, or maybe it would have been okay with a lesser amount of um, rows and a bigger brim. Now, I don't have any more yarn at the moment, so I cannot test it out. But I really wanted to show you how I did this. So you're going to see a couple of pictures anyway of the actual hat. And, yeah. Once again, guys, this is just for fun. For fun, to give you food for thoughts. And I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if anybody wonders what am I going to do with these samples... They're still hats, they're still warm, and they're still functional. Um, and there is a scheme at the moment going on uh, where I live where they will be collecting um, warm things like hats and scarves and, and blankets and what have you to give to charity to those two in need for this winter. So these uh, are destined to be donated to charity but meanwhile i had fun trying to figure this one out i had fun testing it out i had fun uh making them and i had fun showing you how i hope i really hope you did have fun too um again guys <laughs> i'll play Again, if you have not done yet, if you can subscribe to my channel, that just helps me keep going and making more content and helps the channel to grow and so on and so forth. I mean, you know the drill. It really costs nothing. Just click that button that says subscribe and you even get notified when a new video comes along. So I hope you enjoyed it again. Thank you for making it this far and have a happy weekend. Bye.